ever worked once, the label should say take $10.99 and pour it down the drain. Except it wouldn't go. It would just sit there in some greasy water waiting for some grumpy guy with his butt crack showing to come, o- ow, come over and snake his secret plumbing tools through the pipes while he barks at me about what a bad sink owner I am and charges me $250 for the whole lovely experience. Good morning, dear. Not so far. Lauren asked me to remind you to ask David about a convenient time to visit. Thank you. My plate wasn't full enough already. You know, remember, Mom, where we used to give big speeches to me about how the world was my oyster and I could do whatever I wanted? I'm certain I never said anything about the world being any kind of shellfish. Why didn't you just say to me, honey, life is a pain in the ass. Get used to it. Good morning, everybody. I'm not coming home today after work. I'm taking the week off. We're playing a couple nights at a club in Soho. I'm going to crash with a friend of Shelby's, so I don't even know when I'll be back. But it doesn't matter, because Jillian's got the kids till the weekend. Oh, Amy, sink's backed up. You should really call someone. Bye. See you whenever. I got my cell if anyone needs me. Just keep telling yourself this is what Bruce Springsteen's mom puts up with. No, she put up with this 30 years ago, and now she gets perfectly lovely Christmas presents and fly around the world in private jets. Mom, will you please ask Victor? Yeah, 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 I'm on it, honey. Eat your breakfast. Victor gets out of the hospital tomorrow. Yes, you've mentioned that. In fact, I was going to suggest a big Victor homecoming countdown clock on the front lawn. Hey, Hubble's plumbing? Victor said his dad looks really upset if he mentions you. Does that make you feel better? No, honey, I want David to be happy. Uh, yes, I'll hold. Even if he marries someone else? Yeah, even if. If Victor ever dumps me, I hope he gains 100 pounds and all his hair falls out and gets tons of pimples. Forgets how I dress cool so no girl ever looks at me again in his life. I want to be 12. Are you flirting with your computer? Uh, Courtney and I are just, um... Did you by any chance listen to NPR this morning? <laughs> she fixed it to the one she IMs me. It does that. It makes a kissing sound and giggles. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't want to invade your privacy. Carry on. Hey, Maxine. Have you got a minute? Gabby Weller. Well, it's been quite a while. How's Mystic? She must be, um... Fifteen. Just got her learner's permit. Do you believe it? Uh, no, I do not. <laughs> Last time I saw you two, she was showing me some hideous doll that, that uh, cried until you put the right colored spoon in its mouth. <laughs> yeah, it goes by fast. She's a great kid, Maxine. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Please. thing is, I'm kind of slipping. I'm thinking maybe DC- DCF should take custody of Mystic again. Slipping how? You know, the drug thing again. I was thinking if, if they could just take her for a little while until I can get myself back on solid ground, you know? I'm sorry to hear this, Gabby. You've had five clean years. Um, last time I checked, a steady job. If value Mart, I'm still there. Tell me exactly what has happened. Well, I went to a party the other night, and I smoked a joint. And I know that might not seem like much to you, but I know me. And once those floodgates open... Anyway, next morning I was already thinking about searching old day runners and finding my dealer's number. All right. uh, This is the name of a drug counselor. I want you to call her today. And after you've met with her, I want you to call me. Breaking up a family is never the first step. And... I'd like to think it won't come to that. Okay, Maxine. If that's what I have to do. 
Thanks. All right, we're here in review of Casey Ives's charge of threatening. Uh, I see the defendant is present as his counsel. Roberta Orr, Your Honor, and frankly, I'm wondering what we're all doing here. Uh, I'm sure the state will be happy to enlighten you, Mr. Friedman. Your Honor, we're here because this young man is a walking time bomb. <laughs> yeah, right. Your Honor, I would like the state to avoid using charged language when referring to my client. A walking time bomb, really. It's a fair request, Mr. Friedman. Actually, Your Honor, the state feels that that's an accurate characterization. We will prove that this defendant wrote highly threatening messages on the Internet, and a subsequent search of his locker yielded a hit list. A hit list, please. And a working you... floor plan of the high school. Are you saying that the authorities suspect a plot to attack the school? I don't think he was planning on making a paper mache replica for the art fair, Your Honor. The state has decided my client was going to use a piece of paper to commit a crime. How do we know I'm not going to use my fist to punch Mr. Friedman in the mouth? Perhaps your marshal should arrest me before that happens. Don't tempt me, Ms. Orr. Mr. Van Exel, when can we hear testimony in this matter? 3.30. 3.30, attorneys, and uh, given the gravity of this subject matter, please have your consummate professional faces on. Understood? Good. We'll see everyone then. I was thinking we could go in September when my summer work slows down. On a trip. People go on vacations. It's not unheard of. Together? Well, we could go on separate trips, but I don't think it would be as much fun. And uh, how many hotel rooms were we thinking that we'd have on this trip? Depends. On what? On where we are by then. If we're a one-room couple, well, then we'll have one room. If we're a two-room couple, well, then two rooms. However, there's a chance we could start off as a two-room couple and end up as a one-room couple. And there's a chance we'd do the reverse. All I know is this. I'm going on my annual vacation in September. And I can't imagine going to another place to watch sunsets on another continent without you. I'm passing love notes. Oh, the kids. Yes. I'm supposed to tell you to tell Lauren that the new Black Eyed Peas CD is like totally sweet. We'll certainly pass along some version of that. So Victor's coming home tomorrow? Yeah. yeah. He's going great. Thanks for the cookies. That was a big hit. He went through them in about 15 minutes. Did you help? No. Nope. No, I was good. Lauren wanted me to ask you when she can come to see him. Anytime. Really. I mean, he, he he's staying at uh, Kelly's mother's place for the next few days. So she's going to look after him while I'm at work. But Lauren's welcome at any time. I mean, it's actually closer to your house, anyway. Well, I'll let them work it out. I'll just be a taxi. Amy. If you change your mind. I'm not going to. Vice Principal Heffron, when did you first become concerned about the defendant's writings? They were brought to my attention by a student, Mitchell Kirby. He had printed out several pages from KCI's website and brought them to me. Your Honor, with the court's permission, I'd like to have Mr. Heffron read a passage from the website in question. I'll allow it. It's entitled People Who Should Die by Casey Ives. The mouth breathers, the bullies, the jocks and their stupid girlfriends, the punks with their stupid nose rings and eyebrow rings and belly button rings. And then he goes into a long diatribe against whoever developed the Xbox. Apparently, it didn't live up to Mr. Ives' expectations. Your Honor, clearly, these are the ramblings of a teenager, not to be taken seriously. The state takes them very seriously, Your Honor. Especially after a search of the defendant's locker led to the discovery of a hit list. A, hit li a list bearing the names of students and teachers in Casey Ives' handwriting. 
And the police also found a detailed blueprint of the high school with various locations highlighted. Clearly, Your Honor, such a search was a direct violation of my client's rights under the Fourth Amendment. State of Connecticut versus Chandler, Your Honor, state search of a student's papers and or property will be allowed in the presence of just cause. What just cause? He didn't like the Xbox? The defendant's own statements are sufficient grounds for a conviction in this case, especially when viewed in combination with the items found in the search. Combination because the state right. has combined them. The names uh, could be his all right, Christmas All right, all right, all right, all right, that's enough. Now, obviously, the burden of proof falls upon the state, and your client does have the right against self-incrimination. However, it might be helpful to hear from Mr. Ives. We agree, Your Honor. Mr. Van Exel, when can we schedule that? Tomorrow at 9.30. Tomorrow at 9.30. Thank you. Gabby? Uh, Gabby, it's Maxine Gray. Gabby? Miss Mystic. Dear God, Mystic, where is your mother? Work. I didn't want to call her. It's okay, sweetheart. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. <clears throat> yes, uh, yes, I need it. I need it. Don't you dare put me on hold. It's gonna be all right, honey. I, I need an ambulance right away. My name is Maxine Gray. I'm with the Department of Children and Families. I have a very sick child. She's, she's spitting up blood. Help him out there, honey. He's got that funky fly arm. Push the button. Push the button. The yes, the big red one. Push it. Push the button. Crush him. Enter. Hey, you're not dressed. Not subjective. Look, I don't know who you are, but if you can get him off that couch, I will detail your car. She means it, too. This is my roommate, Donna, the reluctant attorney. She's currently avoiding her life, trying to clean up mine. Donna, say hello to Buck. Hello. Hey. Hey. Donna, I can take it from here. Cool. I'll, um, I'll see you later. That, uh, that car offer still stands. Oh, come on, Kyle. We got like ten minutes. Well, that was today? The ride-along thing? I'll tell you flaking. Uh, no, I'm just, uh, I'm flaking. I thought you wanted to do this. I did, I do. I just, hey, I got a lot going on right now. Yeah. I'd hate to tear you away from all this. Hey, next time, I promise I'm there. You just say when. Okay. Tomorrow. Okay, sure. Be dressed. Don't flake. There's a, a thing I want to talk to you about. Whoa, 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 what, what thing? Just a thing. I'll tell you tomorrow. I've been waiting for information on uh, Mystic Weller. Uh, Weller. 15 years old, vomiting blood. Right. They're processing her release. She should be out any minute. You're sending her home? Well, I could rerun tests, but she's already had plenty. According to her chart, this is her ninth ER visit this year. She has gallbladder disease. Bad and getting worse. And these episodes kick in every couple of months. Unfortunately, nothing is going to alleviate her symptoms until she has surgery. Uh, oh, forgive my ignorance, but if, if she's already been diagnosed, then why has that not happened? Oh, it's on a calendar scheduled for January. That's eight months from now. SWI, sick without insurance, like every other hospital in this country, we have a long wait list for uninsured patients seeking elective surgeries. Elective? It's not as if she's requesting liposuction. Believe me, this is not my favorite part of the job. We're one of the few hospitals in Hartford that'll even see uninsured patients. Exactly what do you suggest she do, doctor? Go home and try to stay alive long enough for you to treat her? Honestly, she'd be better off if her gallbladder burst. Then she becomes an emergency and we have the authority to operate. And if it bursts? And, and she doesn't have time to get here? I don't make the policy. I'm like you. I'm just doing my job. Our dinner was great, Amy. Thank you so much for inviting us. 
Well, you don't have to wait for an invitation, Julian. I, I just thought it'd be easier with Peter out of town. Yeah. How's it going? Okay, I guess. Therapy is helping, I think. Of course, I can only assume he's still seeing that redhead in his band. You, you know, know about her? Oh, yes. In the spirit of open communication, Peter has been communicating his head off about her. Is that who he went to New York with? He went to New York with her? No, uh, not, not with her, just at the same time. They had a gig. <laughs> yeah, right, the old gig excuse. They said they were going to crash at a friend's house, whatever that means. <laughs> Well, it used to mean taking a lot of drugs at the home of somebody who was a friend of somebody and waking up three days later and trying to find your wallet and anyone you'd ever seen before. <laughs> what? Well, in, in Peter's case, it probably means sleeping on a fold-out couch to avoid paying the hotel bill. Yeah, that's what it means. Kyle! You've been very quiet about your life uh, recently. Um, is there anything new? Not really. I quit my job. What? I quit my job. So you're going to try and find a better residency? No, I, I just uh, gave up medicine entirely. But, but that's really all I want to say about it. I don't understand. Me either, really. That, that's really for now. Will you pass the rolls? I had dinner with a very nice man named Matt. Just dinner. I didn't spend the night. He wanted me to, but I told him I was still married. I have to admit, though, I was flattered to have the offer. Sasha Holcomb came to school today with a hickey. Oh. I got nothing. Thank God. You've got Casey Ives on the stand first stop and back to back Grand Theft Autos. Our prom's coming up. Nobody wants to drive their dad's car. And after lunch, I piled on the silliest stuff I could find. I'll do you some good. Oh, sweet. That's what I'm here for, to be sweet. You doing okay? I don't know. You have to be Catholic to be a nun. <laughs> then giving up on men entirely. Just throwing out the baby with the bathwater. I think the bathwater needs to be drained and tested for E. coli. You heard from Mia? Rebecca's gotten a few postcards. Nothing about when she's coming home. Are we pathetic? No. What's our excuse? Our memoirs are shaping up nicely. The first three times they just gave her an antacid and sent her home And then finally they gave her some tests and they found the gallstones It's been over a year and she just keeps getting sicker and sicker Gabby, you're not really having a slip, are you? I will if I have to If she were in foster care, she'd be covered by the state maximum She could have the surgery tomorrow your employer doesn't offer any kind of medical plan? On the books, I'm part-time, 39 hours a week. Anything on top of that I clock is called overtime. They set it up like that so they don't have to pay for health insurance. Maxine, I can't keep watching her suffer. And what if... Gabby, as much as I sympathize, faking a drug problem is not the answer. And returning to drugs is certainly not the answer. Then what is? Universal coverage. But until we have that, I just let me figure out what to do. <laughs> okay, okay. I admit that I wrote that stuff on my blog. But it was nothing. I was just going off because of people. What about people? They don't get me. Your Honor, people don't get me. This is precisely the kind of isolationist thinking that leads to violence, especially when you combine it with a house that looks like a Smith & Wesson museum. Objection, Your Honor. The state is combining again. Sustained, Miss Orr. My son and I go duck hunting, Your Honor, just like the Vice President. Sit down, Mr. Ives. Is that true, Casey? Are there a lot of guns at your house? 
My dad has some guns. He took me hunting a couple times, like he said. I thought it was stupid and boring. Here's what I don't get. Rap stars talk about killing people all the time. And they sell millions of CDs and they're on the radio. My stupid website gets maybe 75 hits a day. So how come rap stars are living in mansions and driving Escalades, and I end up suspended from school and sitting in a courtroom with a lawyer saying I'm a time bomb? Look, I'm sorry if what I wrote freaked anybody out. I never meant to, like, scare anybody. David. Hi. No one answered the front door. I thought they might be back here. Oh, uh, I'm waiting. <laughs> uh, Maxine should be home in a few minutes. Okay. You going to Spain? Hmm. Oh, uh, I don't know. It's just uh, door number one. <laughs> We're going to go somewhere in the fall, uh, but I'm going to let Maxine decide. What, do you think it's a bad idea to let her decide? Hmm? No. No, just um, envy. Yeah. Greetings. Men folk in the garden. <laughs> Where are your uh, cigars and brandy? I told you we forgot something. I'm looking for Amy. You know when she's going to be back? Actually, she said she had a dinner engagement this evening and was going to be late. Would you like me to tell her that you stopped by? Yeah, yes. Please, thank you. Good night. What's that? Oh, my travel agent put these together. I have uh, Ireland for your family, Spain for my family, and China, which I hear you've always wanted to visit. Um, I don't get jet lag, so we could do all three. I'll just leave these here and you decide. Are you completely certain that I'm not dreaming you? <laughs> well, if you are, keep dreaming. I'm sorry, did Amy say where the meeting was? It's important. In Waterbury, at the something, something Stone Inn. Thank you. you were a member of the Women's Bar Association. Went by your house. Your mother said you'd be here. So you drove to Waterbury? My boss isn't exactly in love with me right now. I couldn't afford another sleepless night, so... What's gonna change that? You hearing me out. Do I have a choice? Of course you do. I didn't come here to apologize for going out of town. It was the right thing for me to do, but I, I don't blame you for being angry. I, I know it's not fixable. Amy, what I told you about Kelly the other night, I've never said those words out loud. I used every connection I had to keep it out of the paper so that Victor wouldn't read it. But telling you I couldn't help but relive it. The driving, I... It clears my head. I didn't mean to go that far. I don't, I don't know what I meant to do. I just think... I wanted to be sure. I'm sorry for everything I've put you through. I know that I'm done running. And I know that the only thing that's gonna make you believe that is time I'm asking you for that time I don't have any 
justification to offer you. Except I didn't expect... I was caught off guard. What caught you off guard? Gabby, may I come in? Oh, of course. When was the last time you dusted? What? Look at this filth. You, you call this a home? This is absolute squalor. I cannot allow a child of Connecticut to languish in these unsanitary living conditions. I will be back here at four o'clock sharp to remove your daughter from this home. She will be placed in foster care and she will not be returned until this place is livable. Naturally, I will alert the state as to her medical condition. Since I don't know how long it will take you to clean up this pigsty, I will recommend they schedule surgery immediately. Is that all clear? Yes, it's very clear. Good. Well, as the defense has pointed out r repeatedly, the problem with this case is one of perspective. It can look one way or it can look another, depending on where you are standing. Where this court is standing is on the Constitution. The right to free speech is precisely the right that is shielding the defendant. He has the right to list categories of people that he thinks the world would be better off without. So does everyone in this room. It might be distasteful, might be politically incorrect or even scary, but it is what people have died in wars for. So there you have it. As for his lists of teachers and students and his floor plans of the school, again, the defense is correct. The only thing that connects those things to the website is that the state has put it all in a folder and called it a case. On the other hand, I am obviously well aware of the amount of violence in schools today and as the mother of a middle school student I cannot simply dismiss this case and go on my merry way so therefore my ruling is as follows um, I'm continuing this case without adjudication for two months on the condition that Mr. Ives attends 60 hours of anger management and attends counseling with his family we will meet back here in two months for a progress report and um, good luck we're done. Thank you. <laughs> no, but, uh... Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. It's a good song. It just, it just has a wimpy bass line. It needs some rearranging. Look. Let me take a shot at it, and, and you'll see, okay? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I gotta go. I'll call you back in a little while, okay? Yeah, me too. All right, bye. <laughs> what? Nothing. You look cute. Sort of. Thank you. Sort of. <laughs> so how is New York? It was great, actually. There was this guy from a record company there who asked for our demo. A, a small company, but still. Wow. That's great, Peter. Congratulations. I guess next you'll be going on tour. <laughs> no, but uh, we might be going into the studio. Really? That's great. Well, it sounds like you're in a good place. Frankly, I might be in the best place I've ever been in my whole life. I don't mean that as a dig, it's just how things are. No, I, I see. So what does that mean for us? Well, isn't that what we're in therapy to find out? 
I thought we were in therapy to try and save our marriage. If that's what we decide is best. I, I don't see how either of us can think straight when you are running around the country with a lounge singer. She's not a lounge singer. I don't care what she is, Peter. It's a waste of time and money to go to a marriage counselor when you're involved with another woman. That I know. Okay. Here's what I know. I took you out for a lovely romantic dinner. You stood up and you announced that you weren't in love with me anymore. You had to go find yourself. Now you're tired of that and uh, you want to get back together? Oh, what am I supposed to do? Check in with you every hour and move in and out of my house according to your latest whim? We have children to think about. We had children when you threw me out of my house. What are you saying? I don't know. Are you saying it's over? If I am, Jillian, you have no one to blame but yourself. Everything Walt needs is in his bag. I, I'll pick him up on Sunday night, usual time. Sean, if you and your computer keep this up, you're going to cause a scandal. Oh, I wouldn't be the one pointing fingers about scandal if I were you. Pardon? Well, I mean, I'm not the one skirting the edge of an Old Testament commandment, albeit on a technicality. I know there's a joke in there somewhere. Ignacio and Francesca? Courtney told me last night. Have I never actually got divorced? So, you know, mock me all you want, but I'm not the one gallivanting around with a married man. Oh, oh, my God. Courtney told me everyone knew. I suppose that would be everyone, except me. I never would have said anything if I thought for a minute. Sean, I know that. So, uh, what you said, I know you did not say that lightly. No. But it doesn't change anything. I mean, it doesn't change... We never made it to couples therapy. No, we didn't. And if, if there's any hope for us, I really think we should do that, you know? Before we even have dinner again. Okay. Because... It... What is this? What? Your coffee table is full of travel books? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, you know I, what? I get, what? Never mind. Where are you going? Away from you. What? Why? David, you think I look stupid? You say you're in love with me, and then you're just going to run away again. Only this time you're going to plan better. No, th you're wrong. I don't think so. You're, you're wrong. Listen, hey. What are you doing? Come here. There's a travel site on my computer screen I want to show you. Great, you're planning a trip online. I hear that's very convenient. No, I'm pricing a trip online. Good, good. Get a good deal. I wouldn't want running away from me to cramp your style. Hey, hey, hey. You look at the box here that says number of adults. Ignacio was telling me about a trip he's taking with your mom, and I was pricing a fantasy. All you can be mad about is me being stupid. <sighs> well, we are nowhere near ready to take a trip together. Oh, I know that. And, 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 and I've already been to the Bahamas. I'd, I'd want to go to someplace I haven't been before. Oh, you, you, you're pricing multiple things. There wasn't anything on TV. So, so you're that certain I would, I would take you back? No, not at all. Because I almost didn't, David. You know, I need somebody to be there for me. I know. I deserve that. You do. And so far, I haven't seen one sign you, that you're yeah, capable of doing that. I will. You said it yourself. Everybody's got baggage, right? When did I say that? You said we wouldn't find anything easy. That's not the same thing. 
doing? You're arguing semantics. See, see, that's another thing. You can never get out of prosecutor mode. That is an area we haven't even had time Jimmy, to touch on. You can on. dissect us until the cows come home, but you can't deny I'm, what happens I'm, between I'm us. I'm not denying it, David. I'm just, I'm not, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just not 16 years old anymore. And I, I have some kind I, of an dude, off switch. You I, can just turn it oh, on and okay, off. Okay, you, know like you, you, you know what you're doing now. You know what you're doing now. You're picking a fight. I'm not. You know because a fight. we have one nice moment, and then you. I'm not you, I was thinking uh, maybe we could go get a decaf latte or a nice glass of wine and talk about where we'll be spending our vacation. I would prefer to talk about it here. I've come to a decision. I will be going to China and you can go to hell. This is more boring than the Como Award. Oh, come on. Where else can you watch real life cops go after real life bad guys? People do this in front of their TVs for hours. No, no, no. They, they they watch high speed chases. Oh yeah, see, I don't get that. Nine times out of ten, the guy comes out with his hands up and a goofy look on his face. <laughs> no shirt on. <laughs> and people let their dinner get cold for that. <laughs> go figure. <laughs> so what do you think? Uh, about the SWAT team doctor thing? I just quit being a doctor. Why would I want to do it again? Well, because it's totally different than the hospital. You'd be out here with cops. <laughs> so I'd still be a doctor, but I could get killed? No, well, most of the time it's like this. You know, we're waiting around for them to breach a place, and then you make sure no one gets a splinter when they kick the door down. Great, so I could still be a doctor, but it'd be really boring. And the pay would suck. You know, don't ever try to feed your kids as a, as a used car salesman. Bad to go. Stay here and stay down. Freeze, police! Through the night in two years, baby. I'm gonna give you a gold star. Yeah. You wanna play hooky to me? What are we gonna do? We'll think of something. Mm -hmm. I'd like it more planned out then. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
careful. Victor. I can't ever get you up this early when I'm trying to get you. Sorry. Thought it was my son. What? You're kidding. Tell me. I'll be there in two hours. You got a hit. What? You got a hit. A forensic detective friend of mine named John from Drenich. You got a hit. There was a partial print on the knife. You can't run a partial print. You have to imagine where the core is and try it. Run it, you're wrong. You try it again. It's like trying to win the lottery. This morning, you got a hit. So you mean... He knows who killed my wife. Judge Gray! Judge Gray, do you have any comments? What's going on? Judge Gray! You mean you haven't heard? Casey I shot and killed both of his parents and his eight-year-old sister last night. You released him from custody. How do you feel about that? A comment on the board, Judge Gray. Do you care to comment? Judge Gray? Judge Gray? Judge Gray? And here's another one. In Connecticut, Judge Amy Gray heard a case where a 14-year-old boy was arrested with a hit list and a blueprint of the school in his locker. So Mom, I'm going to lose your job? Oh, no, 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 no. A lot of people are going to blame her and make a lot of noise, but that's what people do. It'll all eventually blow over. ...ordered 60 hours of anger management therapy and let the kid Did go. Did you hear that? Bill O'Reilly just said your name. Seven hours later, he shot and killed his parents and his eight-year-old sister. Oh my God! Where were you? It seems Judge uh, was more concerned. Uh, it's a long story, honey, but I'm I'm, I'm fine. Than she was about the lives of three innocent people. Oh, those poor people. Hey, Judge Gray, wake up! I couldn't have seen this coming. This kid did not without hide a crystal ball. He put them on the internet. For Uncle Peter says see. it'll all blow over. Oh my God! Amy, did you lock the front door? I thought I did. What's going on? You. Your front lawn looks like the red carpet at the Oscars. Oh my God, Kyle, what's happened now? I got shot. You, what? No, it's okay. It just grazed my shoulder. So now I got the, the knife scar on this shoulder and the bullet scar on the other shoulder, and I'm going to be a chick magnet at the beach. You got shot? With a gun? Well, yeah, unless the bad guy threw the bullet at me, which I suppose is possible. But I, it's, it's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. In fact, I'm great. So, Judge Gray, we'd love to have you on the factor to explain yourself. And if you sleep well tonight, I'd like to know how. Thank you, Bill, for that story. Are you story. okay? Did Bill O'Reilly just say your name? <clears throat> how did you get shot? Okay, so I go on the stakeout with this cop friend of mine, and, and things go nuts, and he tells me to stay in the car, but you know me, I, I, don't, I don't listen, and I end up catching this bullet in my shoulder, but the whole thing makes me realize I want to join the strike team. You got shot, and that made you realize you wanted to join a strike team. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're doing this thing where they send doctors to the academy, so then you go on raids with these guys in case anyone gets hurt. And, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's still medicine. And Max, are you okay? I'm fine. Mom, what's wrong? But Kyle is... You were upset before, Kyle. Amy's... Mom. <laughs> I don't want Uncle Kyle to be on a strike team where people get shot. It's okay. I've already been shot. What are the odds I'm going to get shot again? Well, if you're on the strike team, I'd say they're pretty high. Yeah. Peter. Well, it's the truth. Mom, are you crying? No. What's wrong? Okay, next time I have a life-altering epiphany, I'm sharing it with another family. Before I ask what's going on out front, I have a more important question. Are Peter and I too old for bunk beds? Thank you.